Hello and welcome to the Key Stage for Options talk for parents. My name is Emily Richardson and I'm the whole school Key Stage Free Progress leader. Usually we would be doing this talk as part of a consultation evening, but of course we're having to do it virtually this year. The talk is designed to help you assist your child in making informed and appropriate choices for their options for GCSE. Um, and you will still have the consultation evening on the 2nd of February, which will be done virtually. And this will give you the opportunity to speak to your child's teachers about um, their option choices. Alongside this video, there's also a Google form to allow you to submit any questions that you might have about the process after this presentation. It is important that the students make informed, realistic choices for their options at GCSE. There is no need for them to panic or worry about this. So far, there's been a careful process to help guide students towards choosing the right options for them. They have had a virtual assembly input from Mr Coleman. They've got their Thursday tutorial sessions to discuss the options process with their tutor. They've joined a Shobi class, which includes helpful resources such as the options booklet, um, the subject talk videos from teachers, and a planning form and a place for them to ask any questions that they might have. And students have plenty of time to think through their options choices carefully. Students will be issued with an electronic options form on the 1st of February. Then on the 2nd of February, they will have their virtual subject consultation evening. And they then have until the end of this half term, the 12th of February, to submit their electronic option choice forms. After this, there is a careful process to ensure that any issues are resolved, such as clashes or over demand for certain subjects. And then along with the year manager and the key statutory progress team, we check through every student's options choices um, and there will be an options confirmation letter that comes home to you, which we then ask you to check and sign as well. At Conyers, we offer a very strong core curriculum so that it means that bad option choices for students are impossible um, because these are the subjects that they study alongside their option choices. Students study two English GCSEs, so English Literature and English Language, one Maths GCSE, at least two Science GCSEs, um, one Modern Foreign Language, and their RE GCSE, which they have started to study this year in year nine. Several years ago now, the GCSEs were reformed. So this means that if you have older children, the courses might or are slightly different to the courses that were studied five or so years ago. Um, some of the main differences include the fact that only practical subjects like art, drama, music, PE, um, do coursework units. And then that means that non-practical subjects um, are assessed by exams only. And we, they're at the end of the two year course. Um, English language now includes 25% of marks awarded for technical accuracy, spelling, punctuation, grammar. And there are some other subjects as well where marks are awarded for grammar, punctuation, and spelling. Um, English language and English literature will count for progression now, whereas progression to post-16 courses, whereas previously it was just English language that counted for progression. And um, most notably, there's a new grading system which now um, uses numbers rather than letters. So there's the addition of the grade nine, which is an A star star. A grade seven would be the equivalent of an A, a grade four would be the equivalent of a C, a pass grade, um, and a grade five would be a good, a strong pass grade. Um, in terms of the key stage four curriculum at Conyers, we give students the opportunity to choose to study a broad range of subjects. So as well as studying the core curriculum, students choose three option subjects. And we put these options um, subjects into blocks that can then be chosen from. So we have technology, writing, practical and IT. Um, we put them into blocks to ensure that students have a broad and balanced curriculum. So this means that students are able to choose no more than one technology subject, no more than two writing subjects, no more than two practical subjects 
and no more than one IT subject. And it makes sure that students have three options that are varied and manageable. So for example, they're not too writing or essay heavy or too coursework heavy. As an example, a student could choose to study two writing subjects like geography and history and a practical subject like music, but they wouldn't be able to choose three writing subjects like geography, history and business studies. Um, one thing that's important to note is that there are no easy subjects and all subjects will require um, hard work from the students. In terms of the advice that we give to students about choosing their options, we ask them to consider three things. So what do they enjoy? What are they good at? And what li links best with what they want to do in the future? If students choose a subject that they enjoy, they're far more likely to succeed in them. Equally, if students choose a subject that they're good at, they're far more likely to be engaged with that course at GCSE. Um, and students can use their most recent monitoring reports, which were sent out on the 26th of January, to reflect on the subjects that they do well in. So, for example, subjects where they achieve lots of ones and twos or high steps. Um, not all students will know what they want to do in the future, and that is absolutely fine. But if they do, they can consider which subjects will help them along their pathway to that destination. And students can get advice from their tutor or their teachers um, on the kind of best route to their future. All courses that are studied as the options choices and as the core curriculum are level, what we call level two qualifications. Um, every subject includes an exam. GCSE qualifications are linear courses and exams are at the end of the course and typically worth between 40 to 100%. Um, with BTEC qualifications, exams are taken at the most appropriate time in that course and they make up a third of the qualification. In terms of coursework, for GCSE qualification, um, they do non-examined assessments and they're carried out in school in class time. Um, for BTEC and Nationals qualifications, every unit is assessed through um, coursework and all courses, whether it's a GCSE qualification, BTEC or Nationals, are of equal value and that's really important um, to note. What we ensure is that we maximise the chances of success at Conyers through our core curriculum, as I've already mentioned. All students study three subjects in science, so they do biology, chemistry and physics, and then students are entered for either two or three qualifications. And that decision is made by the science team, um, and these qualifications form part of the core curriculum alongside the options subjects. All students will continue to study a language into GCSE, whether that's German or French. And all students then have the opportunity on top of that to, to study a second language through the option choice of Spanish. All students do core PE, which is one lesson of PE a week. And there is um, no assessment, no qualification for that. But then students who opt for examined PE would do um, that on top of core PE and that would be either the GCSE or the BTEC qualification that's something that is decided by the PE team. In terms of progression and education post-16 all students have to now remain in education or work with training until they are 18 um, and they need at least five level two passes so level two BTECs, GCSEs, nationals including their English and maths, um, to progress on to level three um, courses, so for example, A-level. In terms of progression, the strong core curriculum at Conyers means that a bad choice is impossible, um, and it means that they are given that opportunity to progress on to whatever they would like to choose. Um, choice at 14, um, at this stage is preparation for choice at 16 when it is possible to make a bad choice. Um, and we encourage students to make sensible choices by using the options booklet, watching the options videos, um, talking to staff, including their tutor, their subject teachers, 
reflecting on their experience of their key stage three subjects and if possible speaking to older siblings students about their own experiences of the options process obviously the more research they do about it um, the more well informed their choices will be so that brings me to the end of my talk. If you have any questions at all about the options process, please do not hesitate to get in contact. We have a Google form alongside this video that can be used to ask any questions and I will respond to those. And I've also included emails of anyone that you might want to contact on this slide. So we've got John Downs, the deputy head, Chris Coleman, the assistant head teacher, myself, um, the Key Stage 3 Progress Leader, Joe Croft, um, the Information and Guidance Coordinator, and Ian Livesey, the Year Manager. Thank you very much for listening to this presentation.